Hi and welcome to your next lecture in computer science for everyone. This time we're going to be talking about Java. Java started in 1991, although the first version was released in 1995, so from its conception it took them four years to release the first version. It went through a few names, first Oak, then Green, then Java. Oak was copyrighted, that's why they had to change the name from that. And I guess they didn't like the name Green, but Java came from, well, it's thought to come from Java coffee that the developers oftentimes consumed. In the beginning, Java was going to be used as a program for interactive television. However, it, only very recently we've got an interactive television, so it was a bit ahead of its time. So by the time Java came out, the developers wanted to address problems found in C and C++, which were two older languages that had a few annoying features, let's call it. However, it ended up diverging from that objective, and it turned into a completely different language that is used for completely different purposes. Java is mostly used for, um, well, sometimes the web and server-side development and cross-platform applications uh, that aren't very resource-heavy, because as we know, Java is an interpreted language and is therefore slower than compiled languages. C and C++ were compiled languages, so they're used for more heavyweight applications. Java is used more when for commercial applications where being cross-platform, being able to be run in Windows, PC, or Mac, um, sorry, Windows, Linux, or Mac, is more important than it being run really quickly. Although we will not study how different Java is from C or C++, when you study these two languages, if you ever do, you will see the differences quite quickly. So, as I've said, Java is an interpreted language, and this means that any platform that has the interpreted that we've talked about can run Java programs. This is one of the strengths of Java. And nowadays, nearly every platform, Windows, Mac, Linux, Android, and mm, televisions and servers, um, has this interpreter, which is called JVM. We've seen this already. JVM stands for Java Virtual Machine. So, obviously, this lets us write a program once in your computer and distribute it anywhere. And this is great because it saves us time. We don't have to create different programs for different platforms. So, these are the strengths of Java. And this is the end of the so-called theoretical section of the course. From now, we are going to start programming. In the next couple of lectures, we're going to install Java in our computers, install something, some, a program which will let us write the code, and then we'll get started. So stick with me, and let's go into the next lecture.